Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include European Commission assesses eight EU countries' readiness to join the euro area. Investors will lose out if the UK leaves the EU. And new directives on defence rights in the EU towards progress. European Union solar firms accuse Chinese rivals of violating agreements. Plus, EU watchdog says fines must be factored into stress tests. It's Tuesday, 17th of June. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the top story from our homepage. European Commission assesses eight EU countries' readiness to join the euro area. The European Commission has yesterday released its 2014 Convergence Report, which assesses eight member states' readiness to join the single currency. The report goes on to describe these countries as having made uneven progress on the road to euro adoption, but Lithuania stands out from the group as it now fulfills the convergence criteria. The seven other member states, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Croatia, Hungary, Poland, Romania and Sweden, are not yet ready for Euro fiscal assimilation. Investors will lose out if the UK leaves the EU. It seems as if every day calls for the UK to leave the EU are getting louder. Indeed, with the recent success of UKIP at the polls and an EU referendum in the works, the UK's membership of the EU is no longer a certainty. Unfortunately for investors, if the UK does decide to go it alone, the country's business prospects are likely to deteriorate significantly and many companies will suffer. Well, you know, folks, the Japanese Nikkei marketplace seems to trade just dandy, and the last time I looked, they weren't a member of Europe or the Eurozone. History tells us that when the London Stock Exchange was dominating the world as the premier equities trading market, the EU's architect Jean Monnet wasn't even born. New directives on defence rights in the EU towards progress. Human rights play a key role in the determination of criminal law, and as an EU citizen you are free to move and cross borders. But would criminal proceedings be initiated against you? Are your rights the same wherever you are? The results consist of three directives. One on the right to interpretation and translation, one on the right to information, and the last on the right to access to a lawyer. In conclusion, the three directives establish minimum protection rules that are undoubtedly welcome and even necessary after the introduction of the European Arrest Warrant. The question of how these directives will be interpreted by the ECJ remains to be answered. EU solar firms accuse Chinese rivals of violating agreement. European solar panel manufacturers alleged widespread violation of a settlement between the European Union and China over solar panel exports, a move that could reopen the dispute that threatened to explode into a trade war last year. Separately, China on Wednesday warned that a preliminary US decision to close a loophole that allowed some Chinese solar equipment makers to avoid tariffs would worsen trade relations between the two countries. EU watchdog says fines must be factored into stress tests. European banks should factor in potential fines for past misdeeds when they take part in a regulatory assessment of their financial strength, the bloc's top banking supervisor said on Wednesday. Who is me, or does anyone else feel that this is an aberration? We have a rogue banking system that continues to breach legislation, is responsible for collapsing the Western economies, and a government that is somehow compelled to saddle its citizens with the debt. And finally, the government then lashes the banks with financial penalties, which all ultimately get passed on to the citizens. This is a joke. The banks, like any other business breaching its fiduciary duties, should simply be declared bankrupt. More today from our vibrant new author, Peter Brown. Today, part two of Democracy in a Federalised Europe looks at the passerelle clauses under qualified majority voting and considers what this all means for the member nations within the EU. As we reported just a couple of weeks ago, the QMV system comes into full effect in November of this year. And well, in a nutshell, it renders national parliaments largely superfluous to requirements. Take a look at Peter's work. It's good stuff. Links are below. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.